million dollar man Always gets his way <laughs> Then, I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. It's sorry, it says 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you so we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. That's right, buy our merch, you dumb butts. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> We're still getting used to our new little system. Bear with us. Yeah, uh, I told Sori about half an hour ago. I said, push down your computer. She said, I'll do it later. I knew that was going to occur. Well, okay. I was working on it. That's why I didn't push it down. Didn't work on it. It's a complete lie. It's a complete lie. Okay. This is Luca Terilli. See, I was making a thumbnail. Rhapsody of Michael the Archangel of the Fall of Lucifer. This is for the big homie Wackator. Yes. Having, shout out to him. Shout out to the homie. Having said that, without further ado, let's go. Let's do it right now. Brilliant. Get the lyrics.
monster. That's a guitar? Now. 
now shining as a new forged star in the celestial firmament. A burning star of wild pureness and crystalline truth. was like it could have been in a musical yeah you know people say things like oh that was epic blah 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 i mean the term epic is actually a, an actual term it's an actual thing and this this is epic it was uh a bit power metally for me definitely heard the uh the iron maiden influence there i yes. was like holy moly <laughs> Yeah, and I, I don't know, like, how many people... This must have been a massively huge project. Just because it sounded like there was an orchestra there. It sounded like you had multiple... It sounded like a huge project. You had multiple vocalists. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it just seemed like they had... They had they just threw the whole kitchen sink at this thing. Yeah, I feel like maybe there's an official video and, like, we have it. Because how could there only be 3,000 views on this thing? We must have seen that wrong, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. We only had three thousand views on it. It came out twenty twelve. I mean, look, how can that be? Uh, it's it's a uh, very very strange. The name of the like, record is me, what? Uh, Luca Turley's Rhapsody, um, and they've got ten songs. But obviously, this is definitely a uh, a concept record for all. This is on the Ascending to Infinity record. Is is what? It, go ahead. Go ahead. Ascending okay, no, to no, no, infinity. No, no. We, we did. We saw that wrong. There's 140,000 views. Oh, uh, okay. That was just on the uh, right, right, 3,000 right. views on just the lyric video. I'm like, this is impossible. Yeah. <laughs> this is I, literally yeah, I know. such I know. an epic piece of work and only 3,000 people have seen it. I know, it. I know. <laughs> that yeah. would be uh, a real, real, real tragedy. Um, yeah, so it had like that epic sound to it. It was like very lifted. It was like very ginormous, but like bigger than a cathedral. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it was just huge. You know what I mean? Like, some songs have like this, like, whoa, like the way that a cathedral makes you feel. But this one was like, okay, we went outside for this because this was even bigger than that. Yeah. Had a giant sound to it. Obviously, we're talking about the fall of Satan. I thought it was a little bit. Well, it was a little bit remixed, especially yeah, at the end. That's what I was going to say. A little bit different in there. Yeah. Yeah. It... So... That that was that was one of the things that was that was kind of interesting the because was like a little creepy. yeah so and it says chapter one here in the lyrics but I mean this is song nine of a ten song record which obviously yeah. it, it had to be some sort of a concept type of record uh-huh. okay so the first song on that record is Quantum X take an amazing journey through a world of wonders to a place that will blow your mind and move your heart so you'll never be the same again. Um, and then it's all this Latin, Crucifiscus Adoramus, Resurrecte Incarnatus, Apocalypses Jesu, so that's the revelation of Jesus Christ, Quam de Lil Deus, which is probably which God gave to him, uh, uh, Tempus Prope, temp what is that, is it Tempus? Sounds like time. I wonder if he's quoting Revelation 1. The, re the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his servants the things which must soon take place. Oh, maybe. So, tempus, you know, like time, temporary. Yeah. Tempus prope probably yep. means pr prope est, like the time is near or something like that. Uh, okay. So, the book of Revelation starts with the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his uh, servants the things which must soon take place. Um And so, it looks like that's how the song starts. So, I think it looks like they're, try they're the combining... Album. They're combined. It looks like they're combining theology with science fiction. Mm -hmm. It looks like, and 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 they're finding ways to marry that world together, yeah. which is very interesting because that's kind of the journey that I'm on. Um, uh, because it, you yeah, know, you said science fiction. You're not you're not combining your religion with science fiction. No, but science with, fiction, with science, scientific sci theory is what you're science saying. fiction is based on scientific theory. So they're basically saying, okay, this is a theory. What if we lived in a world where that was true, right? Yeah. So like the Matrix, for example. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Right? So like 
you you have to have like some sort of not necessarily like education but like familiarity with scientific with certain scientific theories and philosophies and things like that which mm -hmm. the matrix is full of that um, so would you say like science science when once we like theorize like we bring it down to like where it's like fact and we're like okay there's a scientific law now i guess you could say would you say that the other things like the what were you just talking about the um like the scientific theories that, that make up like oh, science fiction is just you're saying it's science that has not been proven yet so it's just ideas well it's like you know like i used to read this book and you were on this other planet and it had different you know gravitational whatever mm -hmm. so you would you know baseball was like you a single would be like 30,000 feet away and somebody could throw it from 30,000 yeah, feet away. Yeah. So it's basically like taking these principles like, okay, if we had this type of gravity, what would the world look like? And then they plug those people in there. Now, like, you get a guy like Neil deGrasse Tyson who's an actual physicist, so he'll be able to, like, point out, like, mm -hmm. this is wrong, this is wrong. I mean, there's a sense in which Avenger, Avengers is kind of sci-fi. Right, right. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, Avengers that. is one where you mix a little bit of theology with sci-fi with, you know, American, you know, like, so you have Thor who's a... Th that's theology. That's that's uh you know, the myth proper as as we would say, and then you've got Iron Man who is basically an advanced scientist and mm -hmm. is using all the so so like, you know, combining the two I think is one of the cool things about Avengers. But I it looks like both of those worlds are being, <clears throat> you yeah. know, somewhere beyond the arcane multiversum. What what song is this? This is ascending to infinity because because this is to me it looks like a uh, a concept record. So mm -hmm. um, I I go to the other lyrics and try to break them down. So there's a multiverse, right? So again, multiverse is a, is a scientific I think it's a hypothesis at this point. Like there are multiple universe, parallel universes, yada yada yada, whatever you say. So. You've got to be some sort of familiar. You got to have some familiarity with that concept. Mm -hmm. The gene of the cosmos, the code of the soul, mm -hmm. logic and spirit, the vertical limit, a quantum and secret, the the fall of the gods. So you see right there, logic and spirit. Yeah. Right? Like so, yeah. scientific method would be logic and spirituality would be you know all the other stuff. So, it, and and so it looks like that the whole record is about this world or this universe where. Um, you know, Michael, the forces of good and evil get combined, basically. And mm -hmm. the reason I'm saying that is because at the end of the song, uh, which was really, really interesting, at the end of the song, they basically said that, that heaven and hell... I must have missed, 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 missed that <laughs> yeah, if part. You, yeah, watch. So it, it's right at the end, right there. The divine cosmic matrix forging heaven and hell so it's, it's forging them. It's bringing them together. And fueling the energy of the arcane multiverse and was calling me. I closed my eyes and followed the archangel, leaving my beloved and tormented planet, my beloved brothers and sisters, my glory, my sin, now shining as a new forged star in the celestial firmament, a burning star of wild pureness and crystal, crystalline truth. So this person was on a planet and uh, the planet was completely ruined, I guess. They probably destroyed it, polluted it, whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. And um, the Archangel Michael shows up and takes this person to a star. I closed my eyes and followed the Archangel, leaving my beloved and tormented planet, my beloved brothers and sisters, my glory and my sin, now shining as a new forged star in the celestial firmament of burning. So I don't know oh, if I like thought they became that. I didn't know you were saying you're saying he became that. Uh, well, I was just saying I I don't know who that last line refers to. Now shining as a new forged star in the celestial firmament. Um, I don't. Yeah, I mean, grammatically, it's probably t it could be talking about them, it c or it could be talking about he himself got turned into a star. Or he could be saying that his new home is on that star, which doesn't hmm. make sense. You can't live on a star, right? And then the last song is March of Time. Um, One day I will be gone to lead another life because time marches. Time marches without us all. It never stops. Times of peace, of fight, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, sometimes that's such a stressful concept to me. <laughs> please... Please, please help me see the best way to be. Make a change and we live eternally. No more wasted years. No more wasted tears. Life's too short to cry. Long enough to try. 
Oh, that's a good line. Life's mm-hmm. too short to cry long enough to try. Time marches, blah, blah, blah. It looks to me like this is him talking about, especially this line right here, please help me see the best way to be, make a change, and we live, live eternally. I think what's happening is they got a new start on this second planet, so this song is him saying, basically, he's asking Michael not to uh, let him fuck this one up too, basically. Oh, I think is Right? Please help me to see the best way to be. So you make you, a change and we live eternally. Right. Yeah. Right. So it yeah, it look it looks to me like they got off that plan. Michael Michael the Archangel, she was one of the chosen or he or whatever. And there are other people on this new planet, and he's like, All right, help us not to screw up. Because if you look at song six, the dark fate of Atlantis, Atlantis was almost like a retelling of the Eden story where you had these right. this great civilization and all the rest of it, and I think it was because of arrogance or whatever that it got destroyed. And, like, put under underwater, underwater or whatever. Yeah. So, like, you know, the, this idea that, you know, human beings have been given this great gift and this amazing planet that we all have. And that we've, you know, found some, we, we always find some way to screw it up, right? And that's mm-hmm. kind of the point of Atlantis or the Eden story or whatever. So, it looks to me like the devil is there and, you know, humanity sided with the devil and then there is Michael the Archangel and it looks like at the end of the song that we were just listening to that there's even a way to reconcile all this stuff with the devil so that everybody's kind of living in peace on this new planet. That's the best that I could come up with. But So when you, <clears throat> what about like these things? Um, I am the child who cries. I am the grace that lies. I am the eye that stares. I am the mouth that hurts, the cross that bleeds, the hand that heals, the thunder's rage, your inner quake. Yeah, that was a very provocative. Now, obviously, you know, I don't expect, you know, rock stars to have, like, completely perfect theology. Yeah. Um, But it looks like, again, that the record is dealing with, I think, Michael the Archangel and, and, and what does it say, Lucifer, the fall of Lucifer? Yeah. I think that those are used as archetypes for human nature. Oh. So if you if you plug that in, Michael would and, and you know the whole thing where the guy's got two angels on his shoulder, yeah. one's good and one's bad. Yep. And so in reality, those are really just you. That's just your conscience. Oh, yeah, 100%. That's your conscience fighting against your sinful nature. Yeah. So the, the angel on the right shoulder is simply your conscience. And the red guy on the left shoulder is, is your, your sinful nature, your shadow self. And yeah. so they get in conflict with each other. So I think when it says, I'm the child who cries, I'm the grace that lies, blah, blah, blah. I think he's just talking about, you know, all the contradictions and paradoxes of what it means to be a human being. Okay. And obviously that gets yeah, that with, gets I'm demonstrated that. by, you know, Michael and and whatever. Holy yeah. and the next line is holy inner revelation a new testament unfolds carved in me the power of your word the vision and the illusion the force of hate and love. Which is really interesting because it says a new testament unfolds, right? So you've got the old testament in the bible and then you have a new testament. Mm-hmm. And this in this universe there's like a a, a new new testament like there's like a part 3. Mm-hmm. And that follows very nicely if the theory is right that they went off to some new planet because yeah. now you've got another yeah. testament. Yeah, I'm with it. And I, I, you know, I, the, the, there's so many. I wish I was like 500 people because like there's so many things that like I would like to get done. Like I would love to do like there's a real like Christian science fiction could be so awesome because yeah, I think, know I know because. Because my belief is that, well, bibli- so much to work with. Well, biblically speaking, we're going to be in a physical universe. That, that's like a giant misconception a lot of people have, and a lot of that has to right. do with Renaissance artwork. That basically, what we believe is when you die, you float in heaven and you play on a harp and all the rest of it. Um, that's not the biblical picture. For no. The biblical picture is, number one, you're going to have a physical body. You're going to be reconstituted as a physical body, by the way. Happy, not a chubby little baby angel. Happy Easter, everyone. Yes. <laughs> right? Happy Easter. Um, right. And then you've got the Caribbean, and they look like little babies. And they're really just absolutely <laughs> terrifying monsters. Whatever. Who thought of that? Whose idea was it? <laughs> Shout out to the uh, Europeans in the, uh, the Renaissance, man. Um, so... So if you look at that, right, like, so you're going to, we're going to be in a physical Maybe universe. Maybe you're trying to create the picture of innocence. 
Yeah, probably. <laughs> and the original the original <laughs> creation was, you know, the Garden of Eden. A lot of people don't know this, but a lot of, the Garden of Eden was actually on a mountain. Right. It was a mountain garden, and it was a place where God um, lived with angels and human beings simultaneously. That's kind of the picture we see in um, Ezekiel, you know, where God is God is speaking to the devil. He says, you were in Eden, the mountain of God. Mm -hmm. um, and so in the garden of God, and then, you know, Ezekiel says, you know, the holy mountain. So, so what you had was gods and humanity together. Mm -hmm. And which is why, I mean, I'm, I don't want to spend an hour and a half on this review, but it's why um, when um, the, the serpent spoke to Eve, she wasn't freaked out. And the reason for that is that the term serpent and the term seraph, as in one of these flying angels or whatnot, is literally the same Hebrew word. So um, That was like one of the craziest things when you said that, because I was like, okay, that makes more sense. Because I always struggled with that part of that part of Genesis where like she's in the garden and then this like snake. I feel like right. how could you be deceived by a snake? Yeah. Like if there's this <laughs> slithery looking guy with but but if Apparently he had legs at one point, and so like more like a salamander comes up. To him I, I don't know if he had legs. Something? I think he. I, I don't well, know that's what leg. you always hear. Oh, like okay. now I, you're I gonna see. now you're gonna go on your. Well, why wouldn't he have like legs? Oh, what did you think that meant then? Because it says that he now lost you're gonna his wings. Now you're gonna. He lost his wings. Yeah, because the seraph are pictured as having six wings, and that's like a big feature of their. So okay. So they're they're winged cobras basically. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Finish what you're going to say. I just have a funny thought after. Yeah, so it's it's just that, you know, I, I took that as, first of all, you know, you crawl on your belly. I just took his metaphorical of... We never did. The fall yeah. of Satan. Um, but I even if you did try to physicalize it, I would just, I, it, you know, some of this is Hoffmanian, but even if you did physicalize it, the wings represent their, their superiority, their ability to do something that human beings can't, right? Mm -hmm. We can't fly. So them having wings kind of puts us, puts them above us. Yeah. And then the scripture says we're for a little while beneath the angels. So if he loses his wings, then he's now beneath us. Right, 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 so, right, right. So that's how, I, that's how I would interpret like you'll crawl on your belly. Not that he had feet, mm -hmm. but it still works if he had feet, but that he had wings. It also works if, if he lost his wings, um, which again symbolize, I don't know exactly what happened in the garden. Right, like, uh, the, the, God is saying, look, here's the point. There was a deceiver, deception happened. He had a high position. Now he has a low position. That's what you're supposed to get from the mm -hmm. story. I don't know specifically, you know, like yeah, yeah. exactly how it went down, what it looked like. But yeah. um, the feet thing definitely works if you take it literally. But the, the wing thing also works too if you. So if you, if think you about go it with your theory about that's what happened and he lost his wings, so now he was gonna like walk around, and then you think about when. Remember when he goes to the Most High in J the book of Job? Yes. And then he's like, well, where have you been? And he says, from going to, to and fro on the, the earth. earth. Yeah. Like, do you think that that was like a humiliating thing for him to have to say? Because it's like, well, I don't I've know. I've been walking around because I cannot fly. I don't, I don't know if um, the, the being that spoke to God in Job chapter one is the same being that spoke to Eve in Genesis three. Oh, okay. Because it says <clears throat> in Job, it it's says thought, but... uh, when the sons of God went to present themselves, and it says yeah. also Satan was there. Right. The Hebrew actually says Ha Satan. Okay. So Ha in Hebrew is is a definite article. It's the. Yeah. So literally, it would be the, the sons of God presented themselves, and the the Satan came to to okay. to the Most High, and so. A, a lot of people, scholars, you know, Heiser talks about this, that it was literally the devil's advocate. So his role, he wasn't a bad angel. His role was simply to be the devil's advocate, to say, okay, well, this guy's, you know, because there's a divine counsel. Yeah. So the idea was this guy's job, this specific being's job is to, he's responsible for testing humanity. Hmm. So... He wasn't Satan or Satan in the sense of like the personal Satan, but it was his job, mm -hmm. right? Like you would say the lawyer approached or the prosecutor approached. 
And if oh. you think about it, you know, Satan means to oh, oppose. Oh, the Satan means the opposer. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, means yeah, yeah. to oppose. So uh, if, if you say, you know, there's a court in session and the prosecutor went to the bench, you wouldn't say, oh, that guy's name is prosecutor. Right. You'd say, no, his role is prosecutor because right. you put the the in front of it. So um, I'm not certain that the guy in, That's true. That in, is, that in Job 1 yeah. is, ex and, and, and the serpent in Genesis 3 is not called the devil anyway. Yeah. Okay. So it, it, it's just really, really fascinating, really, really, really fascinating stuff. But um, yeah, the, the term serpent um, and the term seraph are uh, the same Hebrew word. So it's, it's, it's so interesting to see. And, you know, it's, it's Nakash is the, is the Hebrew word there. I'm actually going to do, I'm, I'm going to go all out and do the screen share thing. Here you do go, it guys. Do it up. Here you go. Crap, I didn't know you could control it from there. So there, there's the term uh, serpent right there, right? And it sounds like this. Nahash. Nahash. Okay. And um, so that's the word that's used um, in Genesis 3 to talk about the devil. And then what you see here is if I keep scrolling down, this is my nifty uh, Bible software program. Shout out to all the Bible boogiers. <laughs> Okay, so there he goes. The Lord sent fiery serpents um, down there to sting those beautiful people because they were they were uh, they were liars, deceivers. Okay, <laughs> so it, it, you see it right there. It, it's it's kind of cool, right? Um, so there is a serpent right there, and. Uh, that's the term that's used all throughout um, the scripture to talk about to talk about serpents and all that other hmm. that all the good all that other good jazz. So um, you know it's it's just really 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 fascinating yeah. stuff. So, but in my my point is, you know, we live in a physical universe in um, in a biblical worldview, and we're always going to live in a physical universe, mm -hmm. right? So, when you think about it from that perspective, there should be a ton of Christian science fiction. Because what that means I is, was. I mean, biblically I speaking, say. the other thing, here's another shocker, there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. Um, which means that we're going to have, we're going to be occupying a, a physical universe for all eternity. So, in at the end of Revelation, when it says that the new Jerusalem is coming down to the earth... That is a recapitulation of what we had at the beginning where God and men interacted like literally in the same spatial, oh, right. spatial temporal location. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's why you had all the temple stuff and all the rest of it. The reason you had the temple and all the other jazz was because the temple was supposed to be a miniature Garden of Eden. And that's why um, in the Psalms, you, you see it sometime in the superscript, it says a song of ascents, mm -hmm. A-S-C-E-N-T-S. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, is that it was on a hill, right. right? Jerusalem was on a hill, you know, my holy hill. And you would go up to the temple because the garden was up on a mountain. Mm -hmm. And when you enter the temple, there's all this imagery, there's angels, there's garden imagery, blah, blah, blah. So you were going back to the Garden of Eden in, in microcosm when you went up to the temple. So, and then what was also interesting is I got this from Beale Temple and the Church's Mission. The, the curtains of the temple or everything had the universe on it, had the stars, yeah. moon, sun, yep. all the rest yep. of it. So you were, you were going into, they knew this, you were going into a model of the creation before everything mm -hmm. went bad. Mm -hmm. um, and so the point of the last chapter in Revelation, when it talks about the New Jerusalem coming down, is to say the entire universe is going to be a temple where, where God and God and men interact. Mm -hmm. And then we... Mm, we're going to get, you know, go outside and play, you know, is what your parents say. And um, and that's that's going to be the entire universe. You know that verse that says, like, they, and they will all, <clears throat> you won't have to say to your neighbor, know the Lord, before they will all know the Lord? Right. Is that in that same time? That's the ultimate <laughs> fulfillment of the new covenant. That that goes, <laughs> that goes, though, to the whole concept of, you know, the old, <laughs> the old Testament was a mixed covenant. Yep with believers and unbelievers who are still in covenant with God. Yeah. The New Testament, everybody in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, is going to be uh, an authentic, true believer. So... Oh, so that's talking about now, the covenant now. Right. Okay. Right, 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 right. Um, 
So, yeah, so this song, it seems to me that it's a parallel universe, and... It's always, I know I keep asking you that verse, because I keep forgetting the meaning. What verse? That one I just said. We've had that conversation so many times, because I always forget it. Wait, what verse are you talking about? The one, and the, they will all know the Lord. And then there's something about, like, the, the gates of the city won't be closed. Yep. Yep, that was uh, Revelation. I think it was Revelation 21, 22. I guess. What about, what about that? What time period is that? Where the gates of the city won't be closed. Is that the same thing? Where yeah, it looks to me like the eternal state. The gates are, are never... But how is that significant in regard to this? Well, uh, just because you're talking about, you know, this time when, you know, the whole world is a temple. There's a new heaven, a new earth. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So then I'm like, is that that where the gates of the city are never closed? We can just go in and out where, where before the temple... Or the tabernacle was closed to outsiders. It was just something that only certain people could go in and only they had to follow certain rituals before they could even enter that place. Mm -hmm. But then in the end, when everything is renewed, then it's going to be like, okay, the entire world is a temple and there are no closed doors anymore. It's open to everyone that's there because everyone that's there is in the new covenant. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree. I mean, back in the day, the, the, the point of the, well, the open and closed gate was a security concern is that you would close the gate for people that were in your city. It was able to, it was designed to keep bad people out, mm -hmm. much like the wall, mm -hmm. because you had security threats. So the picture of the gates being open indicates there's no security there's no, threat. Right. All enemies have been subdued or they're in another dimension. Okay. Um, but I also think at, at minimum, it also means that the people who are not there, even after judgment has been pronounced on them still wouldn't want to be there because that's yeah and 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 they don't want to experience you know a, a place where god is worshiped so explicitly 24 7 whatever whatever <laughs> yeah it would <laughs> it would be like if uh if being in the presence of god was like the the most badass metal show you'd ever been to and you love metal, then you want to be there. But if you're the type of person that's like, metal is the worst thing on the face of the planet, I hate it so much, like being at that concert would be like hell to you. But right. if you love it, then being there is like, this is the most amazing experience, blah, well, blah, blah. Well, yeah, A, you hate metal, and B, the only thing you hate worse than metal is Corey Taylor. And then there you are at a Slipknot show, and everybody's going, yeah, Corey! <laughs> like, like, right, right. Get me out of here now. <laughs> Now, word. <laughs> Get okay, me well, out. thank you for this song, uh, Wackator. This is this one was crazy. I did not expect it to sound like that. I love it when I don't expect songs to be like that they are. I didn't expect it to be as epic as it was. Yeah. Um, I kind of thought it was gonna be. So I don't like long songs. That's not really. That's more his thing than it is mine. I like like sprints rather than long runs um <laughs> yeah but it yeah. was still it was still an enjoyable ride and it didn't feel like 16 or 17 minute song that it was um i know but, it was pretty crazy yeah it, it was very I, I i was journeying in a dark forest for some of it and then up into the universe it was like it was very interesting <laughs> so anyway shout out to you shout out to this pick and uh shout out to our village this this is uh this is for perkinos i just had to what? Uh, I got to uh, I, I got to close this loop here. Oh, also it's we have to rate the song for Perkinos. Okay, so here here you go. So here is uh, Numbers twenty one. It says the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Right. So there you go. You see right there when you look at fiery serpents. Look, look, people, look, look what you find. Seraph. Seraph. Yeah. So these fiery serpents that were biting the people are called seraphs. Right. Seraph. So the term seraph um, uh, and and nakash are are interchangeable. They're 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 interlinking words, and so um, that's why I believe that the 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 serpent who actually spoke to Eve was not like a literal snake. It was a a seraph, which is a serpentine kind of um, being. It's a mm -hmm. it's basically winged serpents. Um, that fly in and basically guard the throne of God, right. basically, is, is, is the concept. So anyway. So no, Metalhead, that black <laughs> thing in that cage behind you is not what was in the garden. What black thing? No, you know, like people have their snakes in their rooms. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah the little snakes. <laughs> no, it's just an icon. It's just an <laughs> right. icon of, of the original. That's all it is. Along with everything else on this 
in this in this universe, which Rise. is a very yeah, a very 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 interesting. Uh, Next, we'll be talking about the Earth being flat. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you have it. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for tuning in. Uh, there you are, dear listener. Oh wait, we gotta rate it. Perkinos, if if you want further view, it's Deuteronomy eight fifteen through sixteen, Isaiah fourteen twenty nine. Fiery Serpent is a Seraph Nakash. Okay, I give this song a solid 8.9. Uh, really? It's a little bit too power metal for me. Uh, a little bit, a tad bit too power metal for me, but um, still a good jam. 9.3 for me. 9. Point, there you are, dear listener. Vin out. Sorry out. Gone. Goodbye.